If you already know how to do my sew alongs in videos, and if you'll be kind enough to watch at least one ad, should it appear, which enables me to keep bringing you free content, feel free to skip ahead to go straight to the pattern spotlight. Skip ahead to the 38 second mark. Please take a moment to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And also hit the notification bell so you don't miss any uploads. Thanks again and keep on watching. All right, so you ever wonder how once you go from this after you cut out your pattern, right, to getting it to fit back in here? Um... I guess, you know, it depends on if you use the pattern again or, you know, um, some people use the bigger envelopes. Um, but the way I do my um, collar logging system or storage system um, is I put them back in this envelope and my, um, my storage system is electronic. So I know some people um, take out the pattern instructions. I mean, keep the pattern instructions in here, take out the tissue paper, put it in, you know, I guess it's a five by seven um, envelope and put that in storage um, bins or whatever. But, you know, that's a lot of binders to keep this in. So they will put, um, this with instructions in um, a binder, you know, with protection sheets and stuff. But to me, that's just, it's a lot of binders, <laughs> you know, after a while, many patterns that you get. And so I like to have mine, um, my booklet or binder electronic. So, you know, I'll basically just go to the website um, or wherever you can, or you can take a picture of the envelope um and basically copy and paste that into electronic format you can make a booklet out of it you can label each booklet whatever it is so if it's dresses you label it dresses if it's bottoms you label it bottoms but that way it's all electronic there is no paper involved right and no big binders uh involved all right so uh in order to cut down on all of that other costs and stuff, I need to get this back in here. Um, and so the easiest way that I found to do it, then you can check each envelope um, if you want, but um, I just, you know me, I like my standard settings. Um, I think you can see it here. Let's see, nope, you can't see it. So, but here, um, let me just move over here so you can see. Um, this is basically six inches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six inches um, across. Um, I, because some envelopes can be a little bit bigger, I just do a standard um, of five. Okay, because I want it to be a little bit smaller than the envelope to make sure that it fits inside so I want my finished uh, tissue paper width basically to be five inches so to start it you need double it so we're going to start it off at um, 10 inches okay and on my board here um, you see that I have 10 inches across right and then 10 inches up that way and so that's what i'm i'm making sure that um my when i fold it that it's it doesn't go beyond sorry <laughs> that it doesn't go beyond this 10 inch mark okay so what i do is you know, I try to find the, the largest piece because I want that to be the bottom piece. But it, honestly, it really doesn't matter. But I just try to find the largest piece. piece. And one thing that you have to do is rough cut all your pieces. Even if you don't use the, that particular piece, rough cut it out of the tissue paper so you don't have any excess um, tissue paper. Okay? Because um, you don't need the bulk. 
So rough cut every single piece that comes in the envelope, rough cut that out. Um, now you don't want your tissue paper to extend beyond this, this blue board either, right? And this one extends beyond it. So what I'm gonna do is basically fold it in half. I'm gonna start there. So that way it does not go beyond Maybe let me lift this up. Be able to see more. Okay, so we don't want this to go, the tissue paper to go beyond my blue board. Okay, because before, when I opened it from one end to the other, you see that it, it went beyond. Okay, so basically I just fold it in half. All right, so that's basically step one. All right, and you want to take the longest end, and remember, you just we're marking this 10 inch line. We don't want to go beyond 10 inches because when we fold it in half, we want it to be five. So what I usually do is put one side uh, along that 10 inch mark, even if it has, you know, shapes or something. I make sure that that shape is within that. Uh, 10 inch line okay then from here I fold it to make sure that it doesn't extend past the one the one line at the bottom okay and as you can see this part over here we extended beyond so I'm just going to fold it back so it does not extend nothing extends beyond that 10 line and that a little bit. All right, so that's about that right there. And all right, you and you want the back side, not necessarily you don't have to, but it just makes it easier when you're folding to have no like this has um, different pieces because we had to fold it in. You want this, uh, the back side or the last piece to be smooth because basically when you fold it, you want it to be smooth, okay? So anyway, so we're starting like that. So that's this piece, okay? And then I'll just do another one because this has this little edge. I want to do that side so you can see that. Same thing, make sure that every little bit is within that 10, okay? And this doesn't go beyond my uh, blue, so I'm good there. So I'm folding it up so that it's on this line. It doesn't go past that line, all right? And as long as it doesn't extend past here, I'm fine. I don't, I don't need to fold it, and so I just... You know, I'm just building up. I'm just placing that on top of that. So that was that one. Okay. Anything like this, you know, you don't need to do anything to, but just fold it because that most definitely is within that. Um, doesn't go beyond that 10 line. All right. So let's see. This one. All right, make sure to bring any parts that extend uh, so it doesn't extend beyond that number 10 line. So that's my 10 line, so make sure it's under. Fold it so that it doesn't go past my one line. And this doesn't go past, you know, the border, so this is fine. Like that. More over here. As you can see, this one extends past, so I will be folding it. You know, you can fold it either all the way in half or just so it doesn't go past that mark. So the first one I folded all the way in half, but I'm just gonna fold this one here so you can see. You just don't want it to go past that either side of your blue. Now, 
Um, if I fold it in half, let's see what it is. So we want it to go no, past, no more past 10. All right, and we still have a little bit left. So make sure to bring that up to that one. That takes care of that one. Okay. Here's the last one. And this one is probably just in half. All right, so now you have everything, and you have one that's on the bottom that doesn't have any folds. It's, it's smooth, right? So now, press it out so you get as most of the air out of it as possible. Okay? So I just press in both directions to get most of the air out. All right. And at this point... What you want to do is um, just folding it in half. Okay, like that. And again, press out. Get all the air bubbles out. Okay. And it should measure around no more than five or six. You know, some of this you may have to tuck in. In a little bit. Alrighty. Must all that air out. Um, you can grab the envelope if you like. Sometimes I do that. And, you know, here's the opening. I want to make sure that it is not up to that opening, not up to the top like that, but you want to give yourself some room. You want to give yourself some room, okay? Um, so usually what I do is just put it on top like that so you can see it. And then fold it to get where I need to needed it to be. Actually, I should have folded the other way. <laughs> this way, so the smooth side will be up. Fold it again. So you folded it once, right? And you're just folding it where the natural divide is right there as well. Okay, any leftover, you just tuck it in. Okay, getting smooth out all the air bubbles. Point you can slip it right in, but I usually staple it. I don't have to do that step, but I just do staple it, and I usually write what it is on the outside just in case I lose it or something. But as you can see, fits right on back in there. Nice and smooth. So that's how you get all those pieces back into the envelope. Um, and, you know, go ahead and feel free to use that electronic version. Like I was telling you, uh, create a booklet you know your patterns on there um each booklet <coughs> excuse me classified as whatever garment type it is so dress pants skirts you know um and your booklets could be infinite you know there's no limit to to the books booklet electronic booklet versus your binders you're gonna have to keep getting new binders and, you know things of that nature whenever you don't use a pattern you just go on your booklet and you delete the picture <laughs> so i just think that's just so much simpler cost effective um 
than the old method that, that a lot of people probably still use, which is just take the um, tissue paper out, put that in a five by seven envelope, file that away, and then put the envelope with instructions um, in protection, protector sheets um, and in binders. And then, you know, you just have rows and rows and rows and rows of binders. That's just too much. Just do it electronically. If you made this pattern or intend to, or, or if you're going to follow along with me, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content. Thanks again for watching and happy sewing.